Hello and welcome to my creative plot. Today we're going to look at the craft book plugins that are enabled on Damnation, because these functions are very powerful and it seems that a lot of people don't know how to use them, so I figure this will be helpful. The first functionality we're going to start out with is the hidden lever. So everyone knows how levers can switch things on and off. Pretty simple. But if you introduce a sign with on the second line, you bracket X bracket, it now becomes a hidden lever. So this block right here where my head is, is the center block. So every block that you place around this sign can now be right clicked to trigger this lever. See? Now this allows for uh, hidden, obviously, hidden levers, so you, only you know how to like turn on a device or open a door. Um, but this is also compatible with these signs that I'll show you later. The first of the enabled craft book functionalities is the bridge. The bridge can be used with the default materials of cobble, glass, uh, wood planks, and double stone slabs. Uh, there might be more enabled as time goes by. I know OM originally had more of them enabled, but at the moment it's just the default. Now the way that you create the bridge is you take a sign, you have bracket, bridge, bracket on the second line. The first line doesn't make a difference, it just tells you how many blocks have been toggled. On the second and third lines, you want to indicate how many blocks left and right of the sign you want toggled. These are relative to the direction of the sign. As you can see, 2 and 2 here is 2 left and 2 right. If I go over here, however, it's 1 left and 2 right, so it creates this hole. These cannot be hidden very well. Uh, uh, I'm sure people have found ways to do so, but by the default configuration, the signs are pretty hard to hide compared to other forms of it, like the gate and the door, but I'm sure it's not that big of a deal. You can put it on the side of the bridge and then toggle it uh, 0 to the right and like 7 to the left, because these can be 7 wide and 20 long. And they're pretty useful, like if like somebody's walking across the bridge, say, maybe JJ, and then you toggle it, they'll fall right through. So they're pretty fun, and it's a pretty easy thing to do. Um, makes a drawbridge actually functional, which is nice. But yeah, that's the bridge. So this here is a door. It's about the same as the bridge, except it just goes in a different direction. It can be made with the same materials, cobble, glass, wood, planks, and double smooth stone slabs. And the way you do this is that on the very top row, you have to have a sign that says bracket, door down, bracket. You don't have to specify anything else. And then down below, you, have, you must have another sign. Now, since this one is getting toggled, I, play, I had to specify how wide on either side it goes for it to properly place. So on the top you put door down, and on the bottom you put door up. Now the way I have this toggleable is that when you step on any of these pressure plates, it sends a redstone signal around to a repeater, and that repeater then in turn toggles the sign. As you can see, two and two, two to the left, two to the right. And that's how these work. And as an example of a survival build of this, this is the same door that I installed on Darth Jimmy's garage. As you can see, it's the same thing. Step on it and it goes away. And the redstone down here goes down about two blocks, so it's not that difficult to hide, except if you have, you know, a storage room down here, Jimmy. But it's a pretty practical door, and it makes for an effective garage door that isn't using clunky mechanics. Elevators are probably the most practical and widely used part of this plugin. You can easily get from one floor to the second floor to the third floor. Pretty easily, smoothly, straight line. Now, the way you build these is that at the base you must have an iron block, the very, very bottom. 
and then at every one of the floors, you have to have a glass block. That has to be regular glass. We just had an update where you can put carpet over this glass and it will still work, but that is the only change. You can't use colored glass, you have to use the regular glass. In order to set up this elevator, you place a sign three blocks above the floor on every floor. And then you put a button, button of your choosing. Doesn't doesn't have to be stone one, it could be a wooden one. And then once you're done, you just go to every floor and you right click the sign and it will automatically update what floor you're on. And what I did here is that if you put a sign below and on the second line you write something, it will pop up when you're scrolling through. So you have floor one, two, and three. So that could be uh, useful for a lot of customization. I use that to indicate which floor I want to go to in my house. So it's pretty useful. The elevator doesn't even have to be one by one. You can put it in any fashion. I think it's up to like eight or so blocks, maybe a bit more. It can even wrap around to the edge here. But as long as the base matches the glass, and as long as they're all directly connecting, the elevator will work. So you have a functioning elevator, multiple floors, customizable sizes. You can write which floor you're on. And they're really useful getting around your house because it's really compact and it's a lot quicker and a lot better than just a straight ladder down. A gate can be created with one of four different blocks. Fences, iron bars, glass panes, and nether brick fences. The way you create a gate similar to the door in the bridge. You just need one sign pretty close to the gate itself. Bracket, gate, bracket. Now, if there is nothing around here, if I simply make a sign that says gate and then toggle it, it will automatically detect what's nearby. But if you have a number of those different kind of blocks in the area, you might want to, in the first line, specify which kind that you're using. So you have to use a number. So 85 for fences, 101 for iron bars, 102 for glass panes, and 113 for the nether brick fence. Also, the you have to create it with a line of solid blocks at the top, and they have to be solid. They can't be stairs or slabs or anything. So that, ba that acts as the basis for the top. So you can toggle these easily create a nice gate. I use these. It makes a simple and effective gate, and I use it as an alternate opening for my Pinal build. The next feature, and at least in my opinion the most practical and uh, useful, is that of lift signs. Now with the elevator you can smoothly go down. It's a lot more aesthetically pleasing and a lot cooler, but what these need and these don't need are direct lines through all floors. This, it doesn't matter. With these signs, it will connect to any other sign, depending on which direction it's going, any other sign that is at the same X and Z coordinate. So, right here, you have these signs. These lift, these you, you can only arrive at. So if you lift up, lift up, here, go to second floor, then third floor. And then see, since I can't go up anymore, I have this as a just lift. You can also name the floors by putting the name in the first line. And then uh, in the third and fourth line, you can put any information to wherever you're going for it. It also does not have to be in that kind of formation. You can have it like this. This is the way I have it currently set up in my house because my elevator broke. You have the lift signs that go down, down, and that's the way I have it set up. I only have these here for organizational purposes. They're not really necessary here, uh, only because that there is a lift sign here. So if I go up anyway, it will bring me up here because there is a lift sign here of some kind. 
The only reason I need it here is because there is no lift sign up here. So if I remove it, I will not be able to go up. Like I said before, one of the best functionalities of this is the fact that you can phase through blocks. You can have anything here. It can be completely solid. It can have lava, animals. It doesn't make a difference. As long as they are both have the same x and z coordinate, you can lift up and go all the way up here. Likewise, lift down goes all the way down. So it's good when you have when you don't have a direct line straight down through all your floors. You can use these lift signs to get to places where otherwise you wouldn't be able to. They can be completely sectioned off. So lift signs are, at least in my opinion, the most valuable and the most practical of the craftbook functionalities we have enabled here. And the final feature I want to highlight is that of the painting switch. Now. Some of the older players of the game will know the pain of just placing a painting down, not wanting it, and keep going back. Where's the lady with the pig? Come on. Well, this is a thing of the past with the painting switch. You don't need to shuffle through all of these to get to a certain painting, and do this constantly and maybe have the painting fly over there. You can simply place the painting down, and then with a bare hand, right-click, and then scroll. As you scroll with your mouse wheel, or even uh, press numbers, it will switch to different paintings. And they're in sequential order, mostly by size, so you're able to find them pretty easily if you just scroll through. And then to lock the painting, all you have to do is right-click it, and if you scroll again, nothing happens. The painting is locked. So that really helps when trying to find the right painting, so you don't have to constantly place and replace and get frustrated when the only painting you actually wanted never shows up. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you can start to incorporate these in your builds, because they're pretty cool. They have specific purposes, but they fulfill a lot of the purposes that you've always really wanted to do. So have fun with them, and make completely awesome and functional builds. Until next time, see ya! Man, I hate crouching in the air.